I was gonna uh, pick your brain about Oppenheimer. Obviously, uh, you know that just came out. It, it's a huge film. Um, I was curious what your experience was like on that show or that movie, I should say. It was different from anything I've done before, ever. I think um, just the process itself, and, and you know. Christopher Nolan and his approach to VFX, the no CGI approach, uh, of course, um, made things. Uh, <laughs> it was in comp, so we were only in comp, basically. We were only in comp and and trying to do as much as we could with the least amount of intervention. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I was briefed that way, and it was a real team sandbox effort to find solutions to the problems that he was putting in front of us. It was a unique, it was unique. I haven't had an experience like that before. You know, I, I feel like a lot of times like VFX gets the bad rap because it's when people start to spot VFX in, in the show, uh, that's when they start becoming an expert on it. But again, like compositing was an analog thing and to do it, doing it digitally makes sense. Um, same thing with DI, like A Brother Where Art Thou, I think was the first movie to, um, to go completely digital, but it doesn't mean that suddenly that was a VFX film. It just meant that, hey, like we can create continuity across an entire film a lot easier. For you, what was that experience like? What were some of the contributions or some of the challenges that you were running into? I think the, the main challenge was to, um, how many ways can you arrange two shot elements mm -hmm. to convey a story? Or to convey an idea. Making an A, B, <laughs> enough stuff. How many ways is the real question? How many, um, how many ways until you find one that is the right one? Is well, which one, which one really conveys the, the idea that the director had in mind? You know, and you don't have an arsenal of six hundred people doing heavy CG and five departments. Mm -hmm. You only have plates, extremely high res plates, but plates nonetheless. You know, but um, and the answer it takes hundreds, hundreds of versions. Yeah, that's, that's the challenge, and I never had that before. I never had that the opportunity to actually really concentrate on what am I looking at? What is this? How do you? It's it's it was that's that was a very interesting thing. You know, it's just the shut out the noise. These are the two things that you can use, or the three things that you can use. It was amazing. I I really. Um, I really appreciated that. I enjoyed it. You know, obviously, retrospectively, things feel, um, you know, potentially more positive than while you're in them uh, late at night, trying mm -hmm. to solve problems over and over again. But that's the nature of the beast. And, and, and we like that. And I was warned after being asked to join, uh, I was warned that this is not conventional. This is not going to be your usual, uh, your usual process. So don't, don't take it to heart. <laughs> this, I think, is what they told me. And I knew it was going to be, it's a, it was a sandbox experiment. It was how do we convey the idea with two things, you know, so, and, and you're and you're trying everything. You're trying, you're using the tool, turning it inside out and, and, and trying to get the best out of it that the director will like, you know. What were some of the lessons you learned from that whole experience? I think the value of communication and efficient communication is the is something that I take away from every project in good or bad, you know, lack of or excellent communication or less excellent communication. It was a new experience for me, but you know, I already had, you know, 10 years experience behind me. So the, the process is the same. Ultimately, we're still trying to solve problems. Um, but you know, bigger projects like tiny projects face the same bottleneck or the, the same lowest common denominator, which is efficient versus inefficient communication of an idea or, or raising a flag properly or, you know, or or directing something that you don't like into something that you do like um, within yourself, even you know I don't like this. Why don't I like it? It's difficult. It's difficult to do a hundred versions in. In regards to Oppenheimer, like what was the team? Like how big was the team that you were working with? The London team, I think it must have been twenty max, twenty or thirty max, mm -hmm. twenty in London. Right, but so ops, yeah. Um, for the London team. The India team had many more. Uh, we did not communicate much between the two teams. I think there was a real separation of tasks. As controversial as this whole um, topic is about being credited and, and giving credit where, due cred where credit is due, 
which is everywhere, honestly, if you, you know, sure. it's, it's a complex, I think it's not a complex idea, but it's a complex industry, I think, and the politics of it are complex and, mm -hmm. and um, the inner workings of, ti of end titles or end credits are still a mystery to me. And whose responsibility is what? Um, time is money, I'm sure, and lines cost money. But you know, yeah. But it was a very tight. I can speak for my team, my direct London team. Um, I think I think we were tasked with uh, most of the look development, so yeah. the more explicit effects that we you know put on screen.